Only women, children, and dogs are loved unconditionally. A man is only loved under the condition that he provides us. Okay? When you meet a new girl, what do your friends ask you? What she look like? Ladies, when you meet a new guy, what do your friends ask you? What does he do? What the fuck does that do that can help you out? Can this motherfucker facilitate a dream or not? Why is it that an independent woman seems like she can't be a good mate, wife, or mother? Like, I still want to cook for my, even I if I'm busting my ass. It's counterintuitive, right? Because at what the, part is independent, okay. right? It's the same thing as saying that you want a dependent man. These two go opposite of each other because an independent woman depends on no one, and a dependent man can't be dependent on. What should we depend on our man for? For protection, provision. It could be spiritual guide. It could be education. A man who wants to. You haven't said money yet. The priest, the prophet. That's being well, a provider. That's, that's, that's provision. But I'm saying, like, all of these things that I would want for a man, I would love when men pay for my shit. But that doesn't mean that you can't have your own money. But though. also, why did you go. Call her lawyer, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Wahawah Kakwadash. In Hebrew, that's giving all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash. And over honors to the elders and apostles along with the Holy Spirit who taught us his truth, honors to the brethren that's laboring, doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, which would be the true believers of the lost 12 tribes of Israel, the true biblical Israelites, who would be the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, who's returning back to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai during these final moments by hearing and believing his word so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. we we'll back with another lesson to the power and spirit of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. This lesson is going to be Real Talk number 25. It's going to be titled, Maybe, that these women will learn to love the true man of the Lord. These women will learn to love the men of the Lord. Something like that. Now we seen these first two clips, but we're gonna play this one. We're gonna play both of them again real quick. Only women, children, and dogs are loved unconditionally. A man is only loved under the condition that he provides us. Okay? When you meet a new girl. What do your friends ask you? What she look like? Ladies, when you meet a new guy, what do your friends ask you? What does he do? What the fuck does that do that can help you out? Can this motherfucker facilitate a dream or not? Alright, so pretty much Chris Rock said that women don't love men unconditionally you know there got to be conditions that got to be met before a woman will love a man and that love for that man will be based upon what that man can do for that woman what he can do for that woman what he can pr provide for that woman in other words how many how much money he can bring to the table because that's all that matters to a woman. A man could have all the land, all the resources, and not need money, but that woman would still be unhappy because she ain't got no money, even though she got everything that the earth can offer. So women only love men based on how much money they come with. And you know, how much money he can give her. You know, that's the woman's love for a man. Now we're going to get to the second clip real quick again. At, why is it that an independent woman seems like she can't be a good mate, wife, or mother? Like, I still want to cook for my, even I if I'm busting my ass. It's counterintuitive, right? Because... What the, part is? Independent. 
Okay. Right? It's the same thing as saying that you want a dependent man. These two go opposite of each other. Because an independent woman depends on no one. And a dependent man can't be dependent on. What should we depend on our man for? For protection, provision. It could be spiritual guide. It could be education. A man that wants to You haven't said money yet. Priest, the prophet. That's being well, a provider. That's, that's, that's provision. But I'm saying like all of these things that I would want for a man. I would love when men pay for my shit. But pay. that doesn't mean that you can't have your own money. But, but also, why did you go... Di- all right, the brother gave him some game. He said, you know, um, women and man can't be independent. That's that's biblical. The Lord made the man and the woman to depend on each other. That's biblical. Then the woman said, what well, should a woman depend on a man for? The man said, uh, provision and protection. And that's everything, provision and protection. Then he took it a step further. He said education and spiritual guidance. That's all women need, you know, from a man. Protection, provision, education, and spiritual guidance. That sums it up. That's in the scriptures. We're going to get that. But after all of that, that includes everything. Provision and food, that's anything that you would need in this physical world, in this physical world, in the flesh. Then he said education and spiritual guidance. That's everything you need in the spirit. That summed up everything. Then he said, you know, he went to the priest and the prophet, which he's probably, you know, coming back to his heritage. But the woman ain't hear none of that. She said, what about money? A man providing money ain't in the scriptures. And then we coming into the times where money is going to be of no use. When the lights go out, when the dollar collapse, when all hell done broke loose. But we going to get into that. And these real talks is meant to condition the minds of our people through the spirit for these dark times that's ahead. Hey, cause nothing else is gonna save you on that day. So we're gonna get right into it, Matthew 24 and 21, for then shall be great tribulation. We in tribulation right now, but the Lord is gonna turn it up to great tribulation. He's gonna turn it all the way up, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor nor ever shall be. So this is gonna be a time of tribulation Unlike anything you ever heard of, unlike anything you ever seen, nothing you can imagine. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days are going to be shortened. So the Lord is speeding up the time to speed up the day to his return to save us. Lord, when we that elect? Nay, 12 and 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up the time of the great tribulation. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, the children of Israel, but the elect. And there should be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. So our people about to see a time of trouble unlike anything they can imagine. And Michael, the great prince, is going to have to stand up for us. That's what? Divine intervention. Man, there's going to be nothing you can do, nothing you can lean on in the earth to save you in this time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that should be found written in the book. Yeah, so the elect is going to be delivered. It's the elect that's written in the book. And what's this time of trouble such as never was? Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble. So this is our trouble, our tribulation. The Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, the 12 tribes of Israel. It says, but what? But he shall be saved i love it it don't say she the lord ain't dealing with the women he ain't dealt with the women since the book of genesis with eve and even he wasn't dealing with eve at the time the lord is only dealing with the man the man is going to be saved that's why this real talk number 25 is titled hey these women gonna learn to love the men of the lord and it's gonna be what we provide what we bring to the table and we're going to get into that. So it's always a bunch of argument about gender roles in society. The gender roles was um, spoken of in detail in the book of Genesis. So we're going to get into this. What should a man bring to the table? We're going to get into it. Genesis 3 and 17. And it's an Adam. Oh, backdrop. So this is after Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden tree which they didn't eat a literal fruit. They went after the ways of the world, just like our people doing today. 
In other words, they rejected the word of the Heavenly Father and went to the ways of the world, again, like our people do on today. <clears throat> Genesis 3 and 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying that thou should not eat of it. He said, The Lord said, Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So the Lord said he will curse the ground, the earth, for our sake. Let's continue. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. So we will eat of the earth all the days of our life. But the earth will be limited. Let's continue. In the sweat of thy face, thou shalt eat bread till thou return to the ground. What's the sweat of your face? That's labor. So we will have to work the earth for everything that we need in the flesh, food, water, protection, etc. We will have to work the earth for it. And that again, in the sweat of thy face, thou shalt eat bread till thou return to the ground. For our love it was thou taken. So we will work the earth all the days of our life till we return back to the earth. So you get the phrase dust to dust. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So yeah, this is this is the Lord speaking to Adam. The man will be the provider and the worker for the earth. But now we're going to go up to the uh, verse 16, we're going to get the woman's judgment, you know, and what she's supposed to bring to the to the table if the man is the head, the provider, and the protector. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. And sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. So, yeah, women, um, they roll, them bring it to the table. They're expected to bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So, yeah. Um, the man will rule, rule over the woman. So the man will be the head of the house, the leader, and the woman will follow the lead of that man. And the woman following the lead of a man is going to bring us to Genesis 2 and 18. And the Lord Yahweh said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him. So the Lord made the woman to be a helper. So the woman is supposed to depend on the man, her provider. The man is supposed to depend on the woman, which is his helper. <clears throat> the man provides and the woman help the man in his provision. Okay, so that's cause let's now let's go to the book of Sirach 29 and 21. The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and a house to cover shame. So those are all the things most important for life is water, bread, clothing, and a house to cover shame. You got to feed your flesh uh, food and water. You need clothing. Clothing is a form of protection, you know, from the outside world. Insects, uh, thorns, uh, uh, predators. We talking about people. And it says a house to cover shame. A house symbolizes protection from the outside, the outside elements, the weather, the beasts of the field, strange and wicked men that nobody need to be dealing with. That's what the house uh, represents. So let's get back to this clip real quick. What did the man say? opposite of each other because an independent woman depends on no one and a dependent man can't be dependent on what should we depend on our man for for protection provision it could be spiritual god it could be see he said for protection and provision what's the protection it's the house to cover shame what's the provision food water and clothing so yeah these are things that adam that the men would have to bring to the table when taking a wife and the woman, would, what would she bring to the table? She would be a helpmate. So, and let's listen to this again, then continue. Be dependent on. What should we depend on our man for? For protection, provision. It could be spiritual guide. It could be education. A man who wants to... But you haven't said money yet. Priest. So, yeah, he said education and spiritual guidance. We cover the cheap things for life, the physical things. But let's get into that, to, to the education in the spiritual guidance. Well, 
we're gonna go to the book of uh we're gonna go to the book of Timothy, first Timothy five and eight. But if any provide not for his own, and specifically for those of his own house, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So if a man don't provide for his own house, he worse off than an unbeliever. And what is this that a man has to provide? Of course, it's the chief things for life, food, water, bread, clothing, and a house to cover shame. But it gets deeper than that. What else does a man have to provide? This man said it. He said uh, education and spiritual guidance. So let's get that. We're going to go to the book of Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. So we're not going to live by literal food, water, and clothing alone, but by every word that proceedeth out the mouth of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. That's the words written in this book. So let's listen to this again. The man can't be dependent on. What should we depend on our man for? For protection, provision. It could be spiritual guide. It could be education of man. See? So this, the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah is what a man is expected to provide to his family. Again, going back to 1 Timothy 5 and 8. But if any, any man provide not for his own house, and especially for the house of his own house, forgive me, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So a man's going to provide food, water, clothing, shelter, but also the words, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. And the woman will also be taught the ways of the world, you know, the affairs among the people, just so that she can know what kind of world she's living in. Like my last real talk, it was it was called People Can Tell Time, but they don't know what time we in. You know, they don't see that the direction um, that the earth is, is going to, uh, nuclear war, a cashless digital society, that depopulation agenda coming into effect the new world order. And that's why when we get Job 39 and 17, because Yahweh hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. So it's certain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that women just not going to gather on their own. So they would need to be taught by a man. So let's get this again. Depends on no one, and a dependent man can't be dependent on. What should we depend on our man for? For protection, provision. It could be spiritual guide. It could be education of man. Yeah, so that's why women need spiritual guidance and education, because Yahweh have deprived her of wisdom, neither have feet imparted to her understanding. So she need to be taught by a man, not just the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, but the ways of the world. All right. So, um, but. Like, let's continue. But you haven't said money yet. Priest, the prophet, that's being well, a provider. That's, that's, that's provided. provision. But I'm saying, like, all of these things that I would want. So she said you haven't said money yet. So she don't care about the the, the protection, a house to cover shame, uh, provision, food, water, clothing. She don't care about none of that, long as you got some money. She don't care that you can give her spiritual guidance and education. She just care about the money. And, and that's the way America is set up right now. Because let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus 10 and 6. Folly is set in great dignity and the rich sitting in a low place. So you can be a straight dummy. If you got a bunch of money, the women going to want you. You can be a complete retard. If you got money, the women going to want you. And that's going to contribute to their downfall coming into Jacob's trouble. It's going to be a bunch of dumb, dummies with money that um, is going to have no hope of survival. And you women that join it to these men, y'all not going to have no hope of survival. Who are the dummies? It would be your rappers, entertainers, athletes, social media influencers, your scholars that's wise in the wisdom of the world, meaning what? They can't see what's right in front of them and what's right in front of them, judgment. That's why the scriptures say, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hide of himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. So everybody that don't see what's coming, they're what? Not prudent. And that word prudent in the Blue Letter Bible, a word that came up was sensible. Sensible. 
a sensible man, a man with common sense, gonna see what's coming. And these men don't see it. So again, there's gonna be a bunch of dummies with money that get destroyed, and these women gonna get destroyed with them. And you could have no wisdom, no knowledge, no understanding of nothing in the world. Again, you ain't gotta provide nothing. But as long as you got money, the women want you. That's why the Lord said, folly is set in great dignity. It's all the dummies that's sitting at the top. Why? Because they did something stupid and they went viral overnight. They blew up and got rich. And that's what women chase after. But see, but see, let me, let me go back. But see, Esau tricked you women. You, you women, there's it's no hope of survival if you're not of the elect, which most of the two thirds is going to be women because hey, uh, women outnumber men. But again, what that man say that that the man is supposed to be depended on to uh, provide provision, protection, spiritual guidance and education. Well, a man providing all of that stuff. A man don't need money to provide food. He could grow his own food. You know, you don't need a lot of money to provide food. Hey, but you know, ideally, you will need money for food. A man don't necessarily need money to, well, you kind of do need money to provide water unless you know some ancient ways of purifying water because Esau done effed up all the water. But a man don't need money to provide a house to cover shame. You know, if you got a man that's skilled in that trade, he could build you a house and you don't need Esau for that. But also, too, a man don't need money to provide protection. You know, that comes with a man. If you were the man, you should be protected. But what did Esau do? Well, let's go to the book. Let's go to the book of John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So again, the thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and destroy. Who is that thief? Esau Edom. And will, you, will Yahweh Shah say, I don't come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And that's why the Lord says, seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. What things will be added? Uh, provision, protection, your food, water, clothing, and a house to cover shame. But Esau being the ultimate thief, he stole all this stuff from you. For example, let's go back to Syrac 29 and 21. The chief thing for life is water. Esau done polluted all the water. Now you got to buy your water. You got to buy water bottles. You got to buy filter waters. You got to buy filters for your water. See that? Esau done stole up all the land, polluted the soil. Now the only thing you can grow is GMO foods. And, and you got to buy it from him. See that? Esau done stole all the food, stole all the resources. Now he's trying to steal it back from you. Or not, now he's trying to sell it back to you. Apples grow on trees. He charging you for apples. You know, you should be able to plant any and everything that you may eat. You should be able to have your own animals, you know, for meat, milk, whatever. But Esau, you know, done stole up all the land. So most people ain't got enough land to, to live on. So now you got to go to Esau for all of that. And it says clothing. You know, technically, hey, you can grow your own cotton, silk, etc. and make your own clothing. But hey, Esau hogging all of that and you got to buy your clothing from him. That's according to the curses of Deuteronomy. It says a house to cover shame. Well, could buy your house, but Esau hogging up all the wood, all the supplies. Now you got to go to him for the most part to get your house built. Also protection, Esau made the city streets uh, safe by pushing wickedness throughout the earth. Now you got to buy you an alarm system. Now you got to buy you a firearm. Now you got to buy you a ring doorbell camera, home security cameras. You know what I'm saying? 
you got to rely on the police. You got to get you a couple guard dogs. See that? And all of this stuff that you start charging you for, a man should be able to provide a lot of this. Ideally, if he had enough land to live on, to grow crops, raise animals, and had a few wells that he could get water from. But we ain't got none of that because Esau want to charge you for it and even your clothing. And you should ideally be able to build your house off the materials of the earth. Hey, but most of us ain't got land or enough materials that grow on our land to build a, on our own house. And again, your protection. So Esau being the ultimate thief, he stole all of this stuff from us and now he's charging us for it. But see what the women going to find out? Yeah, money can buy some of this stuff, but money can only buy this stuff as long as the dollar has value to it. See, the dollar is losing value. So eventually that dollar not going to be able to buy you no water. It's not going to be able to buy you no food, no clothing. It's not going to be able to pay your bills or, or allow you to buy your house because the value is decreasing day by day. And completely, it's going to be worthless. But see, you got a man, you will have all of this stuff. The Lord said in Isaiah that my servants shall eat, shall drink, and rejoice. But everybody else is going to be thirsty, going to be hungry, and they're going to mourn. But that's why the Lord said, seek ye the kingdom first, and all of these things will be added to you. So the man of the Lord going to be able to provide all of this through Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. And see, and that's why when we come to the book of Obadiah, which is talking about Edom, Esau, the so-called white man, when we come, come down to verse five, if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen until they had enough? Yeah, so anybody else would steal until they had enough. Esau gonna go above and beyond with his theft. That's why he stole your water. He stole your land, stole your food. He stole your protection, made the city streets unsafe so that you can buy his alarm systems, his expensive houses in the gated communities. He stole your Bible and stole your hope and tried to make you pay for it through these Christian churches. But see, you're going to find out, um, all the stuff that Esau stole from us and trying to sell back to us, a man can provide all of that. Went to church all this time, you can have a man of the Lord teaching you for free. But see, yeah, a man will provide all of this stuff, but the women will help. So I got another video we're going to play real quick. Let me pull that up. Pretty boy privilege is not a thing when it comes to men. The most that pretty boy privilege will get you is some comments under your Instagram stories and maybe some women in your DM. But you can't be a pretty boy and broke. It's not a thing. So pretty much the, the woman said, you know, no matter how good you look for a man, if you broke, you unattractive. Right, you be automatically become unattractive. However, women can be broke and be pretty because it will still give them that privilege. Because men are visual creatures. You will still get ahead of the line in clubs, get free meals, get free drinks. It's so freaking easy. So where's the easy? To constantly spend money on dates that may or may not go anywhere because women want free meals. Where's the easy? Mm -hmm. oh. Alright, what did she say again? Let, let's go back to that. So where's the easy? To constantly spend money on free meals, get free drinks. You'll get ahead of the line in clubs, get privilege because men are visual creatures be broke you be automatically become unattractive however women can be broke and be pretty because it will still give them that privilege because so yeah women can be broke have completely nothing still be pretty but they gonna get everything and the scripture said that too we're gonna go to the book of ezekiel chapter 16 verse 15 but thou did trust in thy own beauty and played the hearted because of thy renown, and poured his out thy fornications on everyone that passed by it, his it was. So this is how our people, the nation of Israel, at the peak of their beauty, when the Lord done blessed us above all people, that our people follow after the idols and the traditions of the other people. You know, but in the spirit, this is playing out because what? Our women... They trusted in the beauty. Because see, women don't need a man to provide 
food, water, clothing in the house and protection. Women don't need a man for that no more. Why? Because our women, they trust in their beauty. They know as long as they got a cute face, a cute shape, and can sweet talk a man, hey, somebody gonna come to the rescue. But see, the Lord about to straighten all that out. Hey, and the scriptures say it too. What's coming, your beauty not gonna be able to save you. So that's why the lesson is titled that these women gonna learn to love a true man of the Lord. Because what's Esau's motto? Order out of chaos. Well, that's, that's really the plan of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah is order out of chaos. Because the Lord is going to reestablish that order of Yahweh Shai, then the man, then the woman. That's going to be reestablished through Jacob's trouble. But yeah, um, again, women, because of their beauty, they get food. They get water. They get clothing. They get a house. They get all kind of slaps on the wrist. They get all kind of favors because of their beauty. You know, all the stuff that Esau took from society and he's charging the people for, a woman can damn near get it for free. You know, like the lady said in the video, they can go to the front of the line in the club. They get free food, free drinks. They ain't got to pay. On the small level, yeah, they get all of that. But on the bigger level, you know, even protection. You know, women just know that a man, that a complete stranger going to stand up for them. Hey, we in the days that men ain't standing up for you for you women no more because y'all riding to the core. You know, just know that, a, that the police or law enforcement going to come see your rescue while them days are over. So again, but thou did trust in thine own beauty. Hey, and that's what our women been using to get over these men all this time. So, you know, again, women don't love men unconditionally they love men when certain conditions are met and that for man is not able to provide the the chief things for life they can't provide a certain lifestyle for a woman a woman can go out and get it on her own why because they trust in their beauty because of their beauty they get the good jobs good job promotions favors shown on the job all kind of benefits in society that the man can't get because of their looks. And what did the woman say? Because men are visual creatures. But when we go to Isaiah 3 and 24, and it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be a stink. It's talking about you women. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well said hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. So yeah, your beauty, the women not gonna be beautiful in Jacob's trouble. It's gonna be no running water, all that makeup that's caked up on your face, gonna be peeling and dripping down your face. You ain't gonna be able to do nothing to your hair. Hey, when it comes to hygiene, hygiene, women gonna have a bigger issue when the water is shut off. So going again, going back, but thou did trust in thy own beauty and played the harlot. Well, you women not going to be able to trust on your beauty no more because your beauty is going to fail you. That's why the Lord said there should be burning instead of beauty. It should be a stink instead of a sweet smell. And then when I come to the same precept in the NLT, it reads, instead of smelling a sweet perfume, she will stink. She will wear a rope for a sash and her elegant hair will fall out. She will wear rough burlap instead of rich robes. So they got a saying, rags to riches. Well, your women gonna go from riches to rags, from sugar to shit. And it says, shame will replace her beauty. So that beauty that you glory, glorify yourself in, is gonna turn to shame in, in this time of Jacob's trouble. And that's why when we come to the book, of Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So, yeah, in that day, all women, seven means completion, all women is going to take hold of a man. But it's going to be a gamble. You better make sure you take hold of the right man, take hold of the wrong man. 
you're still going to be put to death with that man that you took hold of. And the women going to say, we were our own apparel. Meaning what? A woman going to step down. She going to go back to what? She's going to go back to what? She going to go back to Genesis 2 and 8. 2 and 18. When the Lord said, you know, I will make for him a help me for him. So the woman is going to step down and no longer want to wear the pants in a relationship. And she's going to want to just be a helper. She's going to know her place as a woman. And let's continue. That's why even when we go to the book of Isaiah uh, 32 and 9. Rise up, you women that are at ease. Why are these women at ease? Because they can trust in their beauty to get them everything that they need while society is up and running. So the Lord said, rise up, you women that are at ease. Hear my voice. Yeah, because a woman ain't got to wake up and grind like a man do. We don't get no favors. We don't get no handouts. You know, we got to fight, especially us Israelite men. A woman just pretty much go up on a job looking pretty. And that's why women know it. That's why before they go to work, what are they doing? Uh, uh, getting their hair all ready, putting on eyeliner, a little bit of makeup. That's why they're wearing tight clothes. They know what their beauty can get them. So the Lord said, rise up, you women that are at ease. Hear my voice, you careless daughters. Give air to my speech, you careless. You beautifying yourself, not realizing you in Babylon the Great, the most dangerous place in all of history. And you're going to find out how dangerous this place is when the lights go out, when the water cut off, when the stores go empty. Many days and years shall you be troubled. And what's the, well, the, the years, that's even right now. But the days of Jacob's trouble, hey, this, this trouble is going to increase for you careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. The sown places will be unsown. Verse 11 Tremble ye, you women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare. What does it mean, strip you and make you bare? Well, the things that women put on, on bot put on their bodies is meant to beautify themselves. The clothing, the makeup, the jewelry, the stuff in their hair, whatever they put on. So the Lord says, strip you, make you bare. That don't mean just strip you in your clothing, but everything that makes you beautiful, from the makeup to the jewelry to the sparkles that you might throw in your hair, all of that, all of that's going to be removed. You know, not literally removed, but meaning those things that you once used for your advantage is going to fail you. And then also, too, you can be a woman that's completely beautiful on the outside, but you rot into the core on the inside. So... Men no, no longer going to be looking at you at the surface. They're going to look at you as you naked. And what? Meaning you exposed, meaning that we're going to see you for who you are. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. So, yeah, the Lord's about to reestablish his order to his men. And the women who get their mind right and they be beautiful in the spirit, you know, a man is going to look past the outward appearance. You know, because men ain't going to have it no, ain't going to have it easy either, but a woman going to have it harder. And if you're beautiful in the spirit, a man of the Lord will be happy to take you in, you know, through the grace, power, and spirit of Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shah. But yeah, uh, we're going to run through these clips again real quick before we close out to see if there's anything else I want to mention. Only women, children, and dogs are loved unconditionally. A man is only loved under the condition that he provides us. Okay? When you meet a new girl, what do your friends ask you? What she look like? Ladies, when you meet a new guy, what do your friends ask you? What does he do? What the fuck does that do that can help you out? Can this motherfucker facilitate a dream or not? And see, the role's gonna be reversed. You know, women say, 
yo, what can that man do to help you out? Well, according to Genesis 2 and 18, the Lord created the woman to help the man. So the, the man of the Lord going to be doing the picking and choosing. What can she do to help me out? You know, through the power of the spirit of Yahweh, Bar Hashem, Yahweh Shah. But that's, again, why this lesson is titled, women are going to learn to love the man of the Lord. Because why? Um, the chief things for life, uh, food, water, clothing, and a house to cover shame, that's not just your physical house, but a spiritual house. You know, and the man of the Lord is going to provide that when the money has failed. When society and the infrastructure has completely collapsed, we're going to be able to provide all of that, you know, through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, through divine intervention. You know, Michael standing up, and then Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, making all kind of other miracles come to pass. And, you know, and a man that do not provide for his own house is worse off than the infidel. So, the men of the Lord going to gonna provide everything. From, you know, provision, protection, spiritual guidance, and education through the days of Jacob's trouble, which is going to lead to our salvation. And then going back to Genesis, sorry, Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Hey, and the women that's joined unto the men of the Lord. Are going to be saved out of it as well but the salvation for the women is going to come through the men who you have about shimmy how shy is dealing with so this brother said what let's go back to it counterintuitive right because at what the, part is independent okay. right it's the same thing it's saying that you want a dependent man these two go opposite of each other because an independent woman depends on no one and a dependent man can't be dependent on what should we depend on our man for? For protection, provision. It could be spiritual guide. It could be education. A man who wants to. But you be haven't said money yet. The priest, the prophet. That's. Hey, that's folly. See, these dummies with money, hey, they're going to be found out to be worthless when all this stuff collapse. Yeah, so the man going to be saved out of it, and women going to learn to be completely dependent in that day. Ain't no woman going to want to be independent in Jacob's trouble. Which is also outlined in um, Isaiah 4 and 1. You know, when the Lord said that seven women shall take hold of one man. Take hold, meaning they're going to be leaning on that man for, for one and all things. Food, water, clothing, the house to cover shame, and a deliverance, you know, out of this place. And in the men, hey, we're not independent. We're going to be dependent on Yahweh Shah, who is our head. Hey, so yeah, that's Real Talk 25. These women gonna learn to love the true man of the Lord. Hey, Lord willing, we be those men. Hey, because the Lord about to set everything in order. All right, till next time, Shalom.